Hi there, I'm recording this video, uh, hopefully no more than half an hour long, to give you an overview of um, how the game Onto Vienna plays. This is a playtest copy, so uh, some of the components are also a bit doctored by me. Um, so don't take too much heed of that. The intention here is just to give you some idea of how the game plays, to try and uh, uh, pique some interest in it. It's uh, in playtesting at the moment. It's uh, to be produced by Compass Games and... Um, just trying to uh, raise its profile, invite any of you who, who are interested to join in with the playtesting. So I'm just going to, uh, this is an introductory scenario. Um, we have the um, Prussians. Uh, so this is one of the three maps and half of one of those maps. Italy's a separate map. You can play um, scenarios with the whole lot or just one map or two maps or just the Italy map or, or like this. We just got part of a map. Um, so we have the Prussians, who are here, 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 uh, and then the Federated German States. We have Hanover, we have Saxony, and then uh, some smaller German states here. We even have some free cities, and, and there's one that uh, has joined the side opposing the Prussians. Now the blue, um, uh, these blue markers indicate uh, Prussian objective hexes, and the green ones the Federated German States objective hexes. Turn normally starts with reinforcements, uh, this being the first game of this one turn scenario, of the first turn of it. Uh, we don't need to do that, so we move straight into the resource phase. We do that by secretly allocate, allocating these command points. It always starts with that non-Prussian player, and in this case we have two for each side. Uh, I'm going to place one here. So um, they're called resource logistics markers and on the other side you have primary, tertiary or secondary. Uh, only two of that in this case. So I'm going to place one there. So normally you place them secretly um, and alternating each side like this and then you would reveal them at the end and thus signalling to your opponent where your main, you know, their spies noticing the main or, 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 or scouts etc noticing the main points of interest logistics moving towards and so forth so the Prussians primary is here their tertiary is there and the federators are secondary here and third tertiary there in their commands then we roll for the command points that will be allocated to these and say I roll um, a 10 for the Prussians uh, so they're going to get eight four and four and we mark it here so there's eight out of the maximum nine each one of those command points could have four and then the third four is for discretionary so they can be shared between either command point or, or elsewhere on the map and uh, then the um, FGS are not so fortunate they've rolled a five and so they're going to get seven, five, and three. Now there's not a huge um, variance in these. Um, so you, you know you won't get wild swings of fortune in the amount of command points um, that uh, you are allotted. So what did I say? Seven, four, and five, and three. <coughs> okay, it doesn't matter too much at this point. So, um, for like the primary will always get between uh, nine and eight, the secondary between seven and six, tertiary between four and five, discretionary between three and five. But the combinations of those is what the die roll will um, offer you more than the great variance in range. And so uh, now um, we head straight towards initiative. So, say um, my initiative roll is nine to six. Uh, so 9 to the FGS, 6 to the Prussians. That's a difference of 3. So that's 3 initiative points um, to the FGS and uh, the, an, or initiative difference. And they win the initiative, so they go first. Now the person who wins the initiative in each of these segments, we're going to go through a number of these segments, I, I think only one in this video, but um, in the game you'll go through a number of them. Uh, until uh, an ending is caused or, 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 or is taken and uh, then you go to siege resolution and rally and that's the end of a game turn. So this is the heart of it. Uh, a number of these sequences, there's always two minimum and then there's a chance on, the, um, if you roll ties on the third segment, 
uh, and then you roll, get a subsequent roll of 11 on 2d6, then the turn would end. On the second tie, if you roll 5, 11 or 16, oh, I guess that's 3d6. I never actually had to do that. But anyway, there's a small roll. If you, um, if you have four ties, it will definitely end. But you can understand you don't often get ties. And normally you're rolling 3d6, not 2d6. But because it's a small scenario, we're only rolling 2d6. Um, so, uh, for the initiative. Um, so, the initiative winner gets to bring in a free reinforcement. So, I am going to reinforce castle here because that's right in the center and uh, it's an objective the prussians could come from here potentially from here maybe here towards it so um i re reduce one of the available reinforcement points and because this is in the home territory it can just go straight into there no problems um so i adjust that and then they have three initiative points. That was the remember the initiative difference between the rolls of nine and six to spend. I'm going to spend two of those to rail this, send this cavalry unit by rail. Because he's cavalry, it costs double the, the rail capacity. You've got to bring the horses, haven't you? So that's a one strength point cavalry division. Costs two rail use. Um, the more rail you, you use, um, if you go over a certain threshold, uh, in this case six, you start incurring uh, victory penalties, victory point penalties. I guess the sense being that as more logistics are being focused in this one um, sector of 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 the uh, of the whole war, um, you're taking it from other sectors. Uh, and then in the context of the bigger game, it's just, you know, the more resources you have to throw, the less your overall victories are going to be worth. Um, so anyway, so that's that. That costs, um, now that has a cost. It costs one of the initiative points and um, it will cost a command point. So that's the secondary command he moved to. In that case, moving by rail, we can take it from the secondary command. So we move that down. I forgot to reduce an initiative point for the... Uh, oh, no, that was a free reinforcement. Yeah, so that's right. So, and then, um, yes, okay. And then the... So we've got two initiative points remaining, and I'm going to use those to build a field fortification. That's going to be down here in Leipzig, because this looks like it could be threatened by the Prussian army here so very quickly. So we quickly build a field fortification there. And that costs two command points, in this case from the tertiary command centre, and um, uh, two initiative points. So that's three initiative used. That's the end of the FGS uh, activation segment. We go to the Prussians. They have the same three initiative points to use now. And what we're going to do is we're going to activate... Um, well, first I will rail this cavalry division again it's a smaller one so it's only costing two um of the rail capacity and we're going to rail it all the way up to the border here we can't rail it over the border because we don't own those rails as of yet as the prussians uh so that was one um initiative point and one command point taking it from the tertiary command there he started within range of that command point, so he can spend that. With um, in the case of the ra the range from command points extends four hexes for the other player and five for the Prussian player. Um, if you uh, activate outside that command range, and you can choose which point you're you're spending command points from, but if you activate outside that, you have to spend an extra command point per activation. You also have those discretionary ones, which you you can spend on that if you wish um okay and then so for the other remaining two activation points of this segment the uh, prussian is going to spend um in activating their army so that because it's an army and he's activating it with all its attachments that's going to cost two command points from their primary command there now the army has a zone of influence like a zone of control in some respects of two it's a it's a big organization and so 
I won't go into all the ins and outs of attachments and uh, so forth, but basically, um, it's if it's attached a uh, cause uh, and possibly and divisions in its hex. Uh, anyway, if it's attached, units are within its zone of influence. They can all move together with it, and so um, for that expenditure, it means we can move. The army of the Elbe here, which has a two attached corps and one attached cavalry division. One of its corps is actually incorporated in it, which means it's it's placed off map and it's, it's sort of incorporated in the actual army counter as it is. So that's obviously naturally going to move with it. The other attached one is not incorporated, and um, but with it being within the zone of influence, they will move together as part of that army. And then the cavalry division can run around and do its thing too. Now, um, the cavalry will have a movement rate of five movement points, four for the others. Uh, the corps and the army, a division there, or, or strength points moving on their own is all the same. So that's one here, two, he's crossing the border. Then he crosses a river into another clear hex, so that's four. So that's spent. Now you notice the army took its... Um, Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but it, it took its uh, command um, logistics marker with it. That would not happen um, if it was not an army. So if your logistics marker is on, starts on what's called like a military point, such as a core or a f fortress or something like this one over here, that will not move as the division that starts with it moves. So anyway, continuing this army activation, the reserve corps going over bridge here, um, over the river. So that's going to cost it two movement points plus one into there, and it doesn't have enough to move over the minor river too. So it will have to stop there. Cavalry division here though can move one, two, three, four, and then five into there, leaving behind a strength point in the Torgo fortress. Um, so that is that activation finished and uh, that's segment two. So we move to the next segment and say the roll is eight to seven to the FGS. So that's a difference of only two. I mark that initiative points on the general records track. Um, and they have their free reinforcement. Now I'm going to put a Saxon reinforcement in here. Um, the core is full, so he can't take any more uh, reinforcements, but we any more strength points. But we can um, put it in the hex, nevertheless. Um, normally, that wouldn't be allowed. You couldn't put it anywhere within your home territory um, if it's not in an enemy zone of influence. But because we have a we have a city here, um, they are being mustered under the protection of the city. So. That's going to go in there to help with the defence of Leipzig. Um, then I'm going to do a fortification here in Kessel because you can see that's obviously been threatened so we want to protect that quite promptly. So that um, costs the two initiative points and two um, secondary command points. So that's the the segment. Over to the Prussian bit of the segment. They are going to spend a reinforcement. It's still in their home territory to reinforce that cavalry division. Um, it's on a rail line tracing back to a supply source. There's a supply source here and here for the Prussians. These are supply sources for the FGS. There's also one there. In fact, in this scenario, um, the uh, Hanoverians start out of supply because Prussian territory splits theirs in, in two, so they cannot trace to the army supplies that way. The only penalty for that is minus one movement, and um, if you enter into combat, you're going to automatically become uh, demoralised at the end of it. Uh, and that is a factor, because often both sides will be demoralised, but then the side that has sort of the most demoralisation, so in that case, say your opponent would have one and you would have two, um, it could determine who is the victor. Um, there are some other penalties, but those are the main ones for being out of supply. Um, and then there's two more 
initiative points. Oh no, I can't look at that. Um, well, it doesn't matter um, so much what it says, but, <laughs> but what I do. Okay, so it's considering that, that they're spending three um, initiative points, I can't remember exactly what I said I, I rolled. Um, so one to move a division. This one's going to go by foot. One, two, three, four, um, which is an initiative point and a tertiary point and then this one's going to go by rail um, leaving behind the command point so the rail will bring it all the way up to there so that's another point of those and you might say why didn't I bring the other by rail too well the fact is is that um, we're spending the rail capacity and I, I want to keep some free for possible later moves without incurring that victory point penalty um, OK, so that's that segment. Then, say, we go into another segment. So so now we would start checking, because this is the third segment of this term, we would start checking to see if we get ties, um, see possible triggering turn end. Um, say we roll 9 and, and 5, so that's a difference of 4. Um, and the Prussians gain uh, the favour in that one, winning the initiative. Um, then they would get their free reinforcement. Um, let's say the reserve corps is still here in friendly territory. So, no, we want it. If we give him a reinforcement, he won't be able to move this turn. The reinforcement would. Um, I think that's correct. Um, It doesn't really matter. Let's just say we reinforce here for, for the sake of argument. And then uh, he's going to spend... Uh, that was free for gaining initiative. Then he's spending primary command points, two initiative points, to activate the army again. Now, notice the Reserve Corps is now outside um, the zone of influence, so he would uh, have to activate individually. Um, which is a bit unfortunate. I could spend um, some more, though, for a combined activation. So that in that case, it's army and core combined activation would add one CP cost and two initiative points costs in this case. I have exactly that. And so I, I spend the last two initiative points and another um, command point. From the primary command, it's within range, and so we can bring him together. Now, when you move together, you're supposed to sort of all move um, in step. So, you know, if this unit had to spend two movement points to cross there, this one would could not move one. It, 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 you you would do it all together. Um, look, can't explain that very well at the moment. I haven't done much of it, but you know, there's a sort of a method of making sure they all move together rather than moving one completely four movement points, then another four movement points, then another four movement points. Um, and here's what it will mean is that there's um, one two movement points spent there, and then one two movement points spent there, and um, I want that to happen as these move in to attack, because these could potentially move in to attack, and then if the attack's successful, they would have movement points left to continue. But I want that to be there for the attack, so these two pause for two movement points, and then they spend two movement points each to move into this hex um, for the attack. Note the primary command point center going in. Now, um, the units that in here, they could potentially react, and, and uh, in fact, they could have reacted as these came closer. A reaction could have meant that they roll down. If they get to react, they could move one or two, depending on the die roll, uh, hexes away. They don't want to react because that is a victory point. So we're just going to take that combat and that will bring us up to the end of this video, because I think it will have shown you enough of kind of uh, the sort of core, uh, uh, many bits of the core of this game system. So we have a field fortification uh, uh, built around the, 
the city. Um, uh, in a clear hex, we have one strength point and a cavalry division of two strength points and um, Saxon core, which um, we see over here, contains five strength points itself. So that is five, six, seven, eight strength points. I actually mark them on the general records track here to help me remember, because sometimes um, in this introductory game, they, they recommend leaving some rules out, such as uh, what's called battle impact. But sometimes battle impact can cause um, combat to go through into two rounds. So you would sort of go through the combat process again to resolve another round of it. So it's quite handy to have a record of your strength points you start with in case you forget them, as I am apt to. So um, we have the Army of the Elbe and its uh, attached cavalry division moving in. The cavalry division is two strength. They're always only one or two strength. Um, and then the Army of the Elbe itself has four strength. And then it's got uh, incorporated, remember, attack and attached, of course, um, eighth core. The eighth core has five strength. So that's nine, ten, eleven. We got eleven strength there. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to get... We didn't manage to get the, uh, so there is the fifth, the eighth core. We didn't manage to get the reserve core to come in. If we had, it would have been sort of good and bad because they're land there. And, and if you have some land there in the combat, you get a, a minus because they're obviously, you know, sort of rough conscripts. So what did I say? I said 11 strength points. OK, I'm recording that on the general records track up there. So, um... So we have 11 to 8 strength points, but the first thing we actually do is we go to the artillery. Uh, we compare the artillery factors. So um, we look here, and armies has artillery strength of 2, uh, recording it here. And, but it's also got um, a reserve core. No, the reserve core's outside, isn't it, in this case. But it's got another core. Cavalry core don't have a count in the artillery factors. It has another Prussian core, which adds three more. So we have five strength of artillery on the Prussian side. And the um, Hanover gets two, but minor S. GS get three, Saxon get three. So the Saxon core get, has three artillery strength. And then they also have some strength points. So for every two FGS infantry strength points, they get one and a half. So they've got four and a half artillery strength. And then we also, if we were in a fort, a fortress, or in fact, I think there's one improved fortress on the map. That's not a field fortification that we built, but marked on the map we would also get some integral artillery and then also we have some extra like siege guns or artillery reserve markers so we have an artillery strength of four against 4.5 in this case we round down the half and then we uh, check the artillery fire modifiers now um the prussians get an automatic minus one their artillery is not so great um the uh hanoverians get a plus one uh, the other, uh, but the, we, we, these are actually the Saxons, so they're on nothing for that. Then we check for the terrain. Clear terrain gives everyone a plus one. Um, but then we also check for man made terrain. Now we have a town which would give minus one, um, but we also have uh, enemy field fortification. And that is at minus two. And we determine it separately for each side. So um, as I understand it, and I, I might make a little gaff here, I think the, uh, t the we get minus one for Leipzig, the town itself, or city rather, sorry, which is a minus two, um, will apply to the Prussians. And then... Uh, another minus two. Sorry, I'm gonna... <laughs> another minus two for the um field fortification. So sorry, minus two against um the attackers and minus two against the defenders. So 
So we end up with net minus two and minus one. I'm not 100% sure, so I'm still learning myself that I did that correctly. But in any case, we then roll the dice. Um, both sides roll. So the Prussians get 10 and the FGS gets 7. 10 minus 2 is 8. And their artillery strength was 5. So we're on this column rolling an 8. Gives a plus 1. So what that's going to mean is the Prussians are going to get plus 1 dice roll modifier in their actual battery. So they... That they get, they've got some bonus from that, and the um, unfortunate thing is that FGS with a six get nothing. Potentially, you could get plus DRM, even that you could uh, cause some strength point losses to your opponent, and maybe even a demoralization, which will put you on a good all of that will put you on a good footing for the next step, which is the main uh, combat. Now. The attacker in this case is a uh, Prussian. Um, we have the dice roll modifiers from artillery worked out. Then we check for land ver effects. As I said, we didn't bring a reserve corps, so that's not in effect. Then we check for infantry effects. Um, mainly that is Austrians versus non-Prussians or anyone versus 25% or more Prussian SPs get minus two. So the Prussian, their artillery is not so great, but their infantry are pretty hot compared to the others. So the FGS is going to get minus two. Then we check for cavalry superiority. Now, um, because we both have cavalry divisions in there, it's going to be a sort of equal toss off. And we roll the die, add the strength. In this case, the FGS gets five, six, seven, and the um, Prussians only get a four. So FGS have the cavalry superiority, so that's going to give them a plus one on the CRT. Um, and then they have an option to roll the difference. So the difference is um, three. They're going to go for it. If they roll this difference on a d or less on a d6, no, they didn't. If they did, they would also get a CRT shift um, for sending in their cavalry, but those cavalry would have to take every odd-numbered loss. Um, so you say, you know, if you only took one SP loss, but you, you gained that CRT shift for your cavalry superiority, your cavalry are going to take that. Depends on, you know, if you, how and if you want to commit them. Um, so uh, there's nobody's starting demoralised and nobody started with some strength points losses from artillery which would adjust things as well. So then we go for the other dice roll modifiers that can be um, actual column shifts and in this case um, we have a city terrain uh, which gives no column shift but because um, the army and uh, the army and its um, it, uh, cavalry cross the minor river. That's going to be one column shift um, to the left for the Prussians. Well, for 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 both of them, but for the the odds column on the combat. Um, then we check for now the leaders. So. Um, the core leader gives plus one, so that's going to be a plus one dice roll modifier on the CRT for the Prussians. Uh, the army leader doesn't give a, pl a, 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 a modifier, but he can offer a re-roll. The um, Saxon leader is also plus one, so that's nice for both of them. They, you, they're either sort of zero minus one or plus one i have a, a plus two man teufel is, is only a division commander but he's a, obviously a ferocious fighter on the prussian side there um then uh we have to factor in these other ones that we already recorded and i will total them up so we get plus one another plus one for the Prussians and we get another plus one for the cavalry superiority for the FGS. So they're both on plus two net um, DRM. And then we go to the roll. So we roll for combat uh, two D6 each and I got a seven for the Prussians and a 12 for the FGS. So we check um, the odds column. Now because we're on 11 to 8, that's not, that's nowhere near 2 to 1. Um, so then we go to a differential um, 
and the differential is 3, so we're on this column. Now we go down to this column because of we're the, uh, being in a, a city, fighting over city terrain. And, um, and then we look down and we have to check the size of the force. So uh, but essentially like a division sized, a core to army size, and then you know great big whopping several cores or an army and so forth would be small, medium or large. Then um, the attacker's losses are determined by the defender's role and the size of the defender's force. Um, in this case, both forces are medium. If if the um, Reserve Corps had managed to come in, if the Prussian Reserve Corps had managed to come in, it would have been a DRM negative to them, them being land verse, just in this case, but they would have got um, been classified as a large army, and so that, that would have got different results on here. So that's the kind of some, a lot of the finesse in the system, an illustration of, of that. Anyway, where were we? So we were on 12 plus 2. It doesn't it goes to 13 or more on this column and a medium size. That's a D3. So that means the Prussians will be demoralized and take three strength point losses. Uh, and then we check. So the Prussians got 7 plus 2 is 9. Again, a medium sized force is D2. So both sides demoralized, but the Prussians take a bit more of a loss. Now, in this introduction, you say, no, 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 that's the end of the combat, and you do the losses, do the demoralizations, work out the loser, and uh, they have to retreat. Um, but in the advance, in, in the base game, the main game, you go to what's called battle impact. And so this can impact things. Um, uh, in the sense that you might actually cause more, for example, cause more strength point losses to your opponent, but according to uh, perhaps the terrain they're in, um, uh, uh, if you attack them concentrically, um, and uh, some of these modify these DRMs we've always already factored in, um, already sort of accounted for though you might cause more losses your your opponent might end up get, getting the better of you so it's not a straightforward um the winner is the one who causes who, who takes the most losses or something like that so anyway in this game we would check um so there's a, like a priority for victory if no one lost any strength points the defender would win i'm skipping some of the steps if only one is demoralized, the other side would win. Well, in, in this case, both of them had of demoralization. Uh, the side, otherwise, then the side with less demoralizations would win. Well, here we're equal. Now we might be equal, but for example, if the defender was already demoralized before the attack, then the attacker would win. That's not the case. Um, now, if we are equal on demoralization, the side who lost the less strength points is the winner. So in this case, the um, FGS successfully defended Leipzig and the um, Prussians would have to retreat back out from where they came. And that would be the end of the combat. But I'm just going to quickly run you through the battle impact because I, I like it so much. Um, so, oh, and... Uh, I forgot about the leader reroll. So yes, um, because the army leader uh, has a plus one rating here, I could have asked for a reroll either of mine or the FGS die roll. In fact, let's yes, we would ask for that. So now the FGS get um, still a very good roll. Ten, uh, still plus two is twelve. It's still going to be a d3 result so there would be actually no change there but they might have rolled a lot less you could also apply that to this battle impact now the battle impact is going to take some of these into account but it's also going to take into account um uh the army re leaders reroll rating so that's going to be plus one for the prussians instead of a reroll in this case and now we, but now we check for field fortification. That's going to make a big difference because of the field fortification. 
The FGS are going to get plus three on battle impact and the Prussians minus three. Um, but, uh, and they didn't manage to get the Prussians, if they had got coming in from two or more hex sides, they would get a bonus and their opponent would get a negative. And they didn't manage to do that because I didn't coordinate that reserve core coming in carefully enough. I should have waited another turn and, and sprung later with them all together. Uh, so running through the modifiers, um, uh, we're just going to apply a plus one from the original artillery um, contest. And oops, we were both, oh no, uh, yeah, we're both demoralized. Okay, uh, cavalry superiority, that's going to be minus one to the Prussians, plus one again to the FGS, um, but minus two for fighting Prussian, fierce and Prussian infantry. So um, then we, that's the net modifiers, and we roll two dice, and they each have a separate table, um, defender and attacker. So in this case, um, the Prussian gets seven, minus two, so they're five, which brings them to a uh, boring no effect. Uh, on the other hand, the FGS get a terrible two, but two on its own would be roll on the defender's failure chart. And so um, that doesn't necessarily mean you lost the, the battle, but there's some kind of failure, panic, fleeing, etc, etc. But fortunately they've got plus two, which brings them up to four, which again is a boring no effect. But um, essentially, the sort of the, the core of that is that um, if you are the loser, you could maybe retreat more than one hex. That could, um, uh, in a situation like this, that might be nice because, say, um, if the uh, Saxons had lost and they got a good battle, in, but still got a good battle impact um, die roll, they could maybe retreat one. Instead of one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, yeah, say over here, and um, meaning their opponent would have to cross either cross a river twice or cross a river and um, a woods which would slow them down, and uh, that would cost two, four. And, and then you'd get they'd get another move away, or it would have to come this way and cross the river to fight them. But then, if conversely, if the Prus if say that was the battle impact result, so instead of the one retreat, they retreated three. But then also the um, Prussians had had a good battle impact result that might have allowed them instead of pursuing one, they might have been able to pursue two or even all three, and then sort of. And then created another combat and also another result could be that uh, you can declare another round of combat unless your opponent does a cavalry death ride if they have any cavalry just a little sort of heads up as some of the uh, excitement and flavor available here now the last thing though i should mention is that because they had their command um center in leipzig and it has been taken and it can't move with a mere core it would have to it's you know a bigger hub than that it's off the map until the next game turn and likewise the fortification is moved so that i think is plenty long enough to give you some uh idea of uh part of the scope of this game and uh maybe to pique some interest in people in joining the playtesting for it <laughs>